So I want to talk about some work that I'm doing jointly with John List and with, with Mike. Um, this is in partnership with the state of Alaska and is funded through um, partially through SPY and then also through the Rasmussen Foundation, which is one of the largest, or it is, is the largest uh, um, foundation in the state of Alaska. Um, the, the gist of the story, what I want to do today is first, in order to talk about the project, I need to give you a little bit of background of what life is like in Alaska. Um, the project is based on uh, an annual dividend program that Alaskans gets every, every year. Actually, I guess about a month from now, we'll, my family will be getting a nice check come in the mail. Um, so I want to sort of explain a little bit about that so you know where the, where the pro what we're embedding this, this donation program into. Um, I'll talk a little about Pick, Click, Give, which is the program that we are, we're working with. And then um, we ran uh, a few, two, two rounds of field experiments. We ran one uh, last year, and Mike presented some of those results here last year. And so I'm going to just reference those briefly just to, sort of a, just to give us a, a, a touching point. I'm not going to present those results per se. And then I'll give you some over, an overview of what we um, these parts that we just that we just completed this uh, this cycle, um, and just to emphasize, everything I'm going to say here is, is extremely preliminary. Uh, I got the data on Monday, I think the, the the finalized data, and was working on it on the plane here. Um, so, but it, we we have a pretty good sense of where this is going to go. But I, you know, nothing here is final. Um, Okay, so first, uh, Alaska's permanent fund. Um, some of you may know this, some of you may not, but Alaska has a sovereign wealth fund that was set up in 1976 by a uh, constitutional amendment. The value of it, I didn't check today, but a few uh, weeks ago, it was upwards in the mid $50 billion, say about $55 billion, maybe $60 billion. Um, it's invested in a diverse portfolio, so it's not tied to oil revenue. So the fact that the oil prices are crashing and sending the Alaskan economy in the tank right now, um, actually our permanent fund dividends are increasing because the stock market overall has been doing uh, fairly well the last couple of years. Um, in order to get a permanent fund dividend, you have to be an Alaska resident. You have to be an Alaska resident who's been in the state for at least 180 days during the past calendar year. So in order to get a 2015 check, you have to have been a resident starting January 1st, 2014. So it's not a 12-month window. It's a, cal it's a calendar year basis. Um, every individual gets a check. So um, I, you know, it's my wife and my son. We will be getting, I, I say a check, actually it's electronically deposited. But we will be getting three, uh, three dividends. So my son gets one, and we just, we just put it into his college, his college scholarship fund. Um, and there's an annual application process that's actually not too much different than having to file your taxes every year. So the way this works is in the first, the first three months of the year, January 1st to March 31st, we have to reapply. And, it's, and you have to apply every single year because basically they want you to certify that you've been in the state for the last 180 days, that kind of a thing. So we have to apply every January, sometime between January 1st and March 31st. And then um, in October of that, of that calendar year is when the checks will be, will be issued. Jim? It is taxed as ordinary income, yes. So there, in fact, the, if you look carefully at your Schedule A, there is a form on your tax that says Alaska Permanent Fund. <laughs> they they want to make sure that they know about it. So we, we do pay federal taxes on it, but no state taxes. Um, OK. Uh, so there is this large chunk of money that shows up in Alaskan households in October. And yes, car dealerships and Best Buy and all of those run all sorts of sales, which raises the question of whether or not we treat this as earned income or manna from heaven. Uh, most of the evidence suggests that actually it is generally treated as earned income, or, or, or not necessarily earned, but treated as part of their household budget. And um, people do smooth that over time. So it's just factored into your household budget. The fact that we buy TVs in October is more um, planning as opposed to uh, spur of the moment spending. Um, it's a non-trivial chunk of money for some households, particularly in rural areas. It can be as much as 10 to 15 percent of household income. Um, because you think about this, if, if you have a relatively large family, if you have four or five children, each child's getting $2,000, you're looking at eight, ten thousand dollars $10,000 in cash coming into your, into your family. And generally, the other thing that's important in the context of this study that I'm going to be talking about, so we will be getting a check this October, probably sometime in the first week in October. I don't actually know how much that that check is going to be just yet. Um, typically, in, a, in probably next week or next week or two, they will announce what the dividend will be. But the newspapers have been projecting those dividends since last September. So people have a very good prior within probably one to $200 of what that dividend check is likely to be. 
So I'm estimating, or the newspapers are estimating that this year we'll get $2,100 per person is the, is the projection. And I'd be, I'd be surprised if we're off by a couple of dollars. Um, and that's actually on, the, on that picture there. I, that's why I have the 2100 in, in dashed lines because we don't actually know for sure. Um, and then this color, the color coded in blue, those are the two years of the project that we're working on, um, just to give you a sense for what we're working with. Okay, so Alaskans get these dividend checks. Well, it turns out that Alaskans, at least if you look at these um, statistics on most generous states in the nation, Alaska generally falls pretty close to the bottom in terms of generosity and individual giving. Now, ironically, Alaskans are among the most generous with respect to donating their time. So it's not that Alaskans are completely selfish. But there's also a reason, for, one of the main reasons for low rates of charitable giving in Alaska is that basically the organizations have not needed to raise money from private from private donors because there's been a very strong um, support from the oil companies in particular. You can see up here that um, in terms of corporate donations, um, Alaska nonprofits get three times as much as the national average from, from corporations, mostly the oil companies. Um, <clears throat> oil revenues have been fairly high, so the state has been fairly generous in supporting nonprofits. And um, our good friend, uh, we call him Uncle Ted, Ted Stevens, was a master at generating um, federal earmarks for the state of Alaska. And so you put all that together, and it's not that Alaskans are stingy or selfish or unwilling to donate, there just hasn't really been the need to, to, to make those donations. And a lot of nonprofits never really bothered to ask. Well, <clears throat> all of that stuff is going away. Ted Stevens is no longer in the Senate. Federal earmarks are no longer the way they were. Oil prices are going through the floor, and the oil companies are no longer as generous as they used to be because they don't have as much revenue to share, which means that the nonprofits, in order to survive, are going to have to start thinking about individual donations. They're going to have to go somewhere else for the money and do something they haven't done before, which is where this Pick, Click, Give program comes into play. <clears throat> so in 2009, recognizing that the... Uh, uh, sort of the gravy train, if you want to call it that, is no longer running. Um, <clears throat> the Rasmussen Foundation took the lead and worked with the state to create this program called Pick, Click, Give. And Pick, Click, Give basically gives every Alaskan the opportunity to donate a portion or all of their permanent fund dividend. Now, the application process can be paper or it can be online. Um, I'm going to focus today, our data is really on the online part, because the application for your permanent fund dividend can be paper or online. Donations to pick, click, give can only be done through the online process. So you can't do a paper donation. So but in the grand scheme of things, not a big deal. 85% of people file online, but 15% um, of people don't. Um, the way this works, if you're going to file online for your permanent fund dividend, you go to the website, you check a bunch of boxes, certify that you're still in Alaska and you're eligible, give them your bank account number, and you're done. <clears throat> After you click, but before, you're, before that final you're done, go ahead and submit, one last box shows up on that website and looks something, it'll take you to this page over here if you go, which basically says one more thing. If you'd like, you can donate some of your money to any Alaskan charity. Now, Pick, Click, Give, just to, to emphasize here, Pick, Click, Give is an umbrella um, uh, path to donate money. And individuals, once you go to their website, is this, is this pointer? Um, you can see over here, search organizations. Um, you can donate money to any Alaskan nonprofit. So, it, so that they, it's, it's not like United Way where it just kind of goes into a box, you don't know where it's going. You, you go to pick, click, give, and they're the conduit for you to then donate to the Food Bank of Alaska or to the University of Alaska. And you can search for organizations or you can pick out your organization. Um, that's the, to give you a sense of scale, the program was started in 2009. Um, on the left side, we have the number of people who are donating. On the right side, we have the uh, total amount donated. You can see that since the program has been implemented, um, participation and the total dollars raised have been um, increasing substantially. Um, and Pick, Click, Give program loves to point to charts like this, um, but sometimes, I, did, I didn't do it today, but in some other presentations, sometimes what I'll do is readjust the axis to recognize what the maximum number of donors is, which is 600,000, and you can see that's only going up to 35. And $1 billion is actually given out every year. And so as a result, even though I can show you a picture here which shows tremendous growth in the program, what we're actually talking about is 5% of the people donating less than, less than a half a percent of the total amount donated, uh, total amount distributed through the permanent fund program. So participation in the grand scheme of things is actually, it's, it's been growing, which is nice, but there's still a lot of room for improvement, and that's where, where, we, um, where we came in. So the, the state had come to us and asked if we could help with... Um, with this Pick, Click, Give program. The timing was kind of nice because uh, John 
And Mike, you, you, you didn't come up for that one, but we, we had hosted a, I don't want to call it a mini spy, but a, something of a spy-ish workshop in Alaska um, where we got a handful of people. John was here, Jim Andrioni. I don't know who else is here from the audience that might have been up there. Um, and that really got a lot of Alaskan nonprofits engaged. And then out of that, they said, hey, can you guys help us with this Pick, Click, Give program? Because this is our new baby, and we really want to see something happen. Um, so in 2014, and then again this past, this past cycle, we ran um, a couple of field experiments, which is what I want to talk to you about today. Um, the, before I get into the next set of steps, just to think about the timeline here. Um, so what, basically what happened in both 14 and in 15 is we mailed out postcards to um, encourage people to donate in different ways, and we're going to change the postcards. Those postcards would go out the week after Christmas. We sent out the week after Christmas because we wanted to make sure that they hit household doors by January 1st, which is the, the, the opening of the permanent fund registration program. And that's when the overwhelming majority of Alaskans actually um, do their permanent fund registrations because the newspapers do this big push and everyone registers on January 1st so you don't forget about it later. Um, so we wanted to make sure everything was there. So January 1st to March 31st is the permanent fund dividend registration timeline. At the time when you're, when you're registering for your permanent fund, you don't know exactly how much your dividend check is going to be, but you have some pretty strong priors about roughly what it's going to be. And those projections in January are actually pretty, are pretty good. Um, so people have a, a very good sense for what that's going to be. And so our campaign is embedded in that January through March um, registration process, and then the checks are actually distributed that following October. OK. So these are statewide campaigns. So with the, um, I, I like to tell people when I'm in Alaska, yes, you were in my experiment. You just didn't know it. Um, and it always gets a few chuckles from people who realize that, you know, that when we're talking about natural field experiments, it's easy for me to say, hey, did you know you were in my experiment? Probably not. Um, <clears throat> the subject pool is every household in Alaska. There's about 290,000 households. There's about 650,000 people that we're talking about. So it's a, it's, a large, um, it's a large sample that we're working with. We sent targeted messages to the households. Those were mailed in December of 2013 and again in 14. Um, and the randomization, um, unfortunately, was at the zip code level. We could not randomize at the individual level because the state would not give us that level of data. So we wound up with data. The data that we wind up at the end with is um, every person's uh, donations decisions, whether they registered for the permanent fund, um, their zip code, their gender, and the year of birth. And that's all the information we could get. We could not get addresses. So we had to randomize at the zip code level. All right, so last year, um, and this, I just want to summarize this, and then I'll segue into what we did this year. So last year, what we did is we designed two postcards, and of course, there's a third, was the control group, that, that focused on two different motives for giving. The first one, you can see in the top with the heart, the idea was to focus on the benefits to self, and the message there was warm your heart, pick, click, give, share your permanent fund. The, uh, the second message focused more on benefits to others, make Alaska better for everyone. We chose to focus on the state of Alaska because Alaskans like to think of themselves as special. Um, being an Alaskan is a badge of honor. Um, and so we, we were trying to figure out, you know, when, when you're trying to advertise for a generic thing called make a donation, we couldn't put a puppy and a kitten up there because that would not, rec that would not recognize that there's education programs. We didn't want to put you know, the food bank up there. It was hard for us to try and find something generic towards donating without signaling any one particular charity or cause, and we wanted to avoid that, and so we focused on the state of Alaska and just make Alaska better. Um, <clears throat> the results, um, the, the uh, heart postcard was incredibly powerful in terms of the effect that it had, far, far stronger than I expected going into this. Um, I figured we'd see an effect. I was surprised at the magnitude of the effect. Um, people were very responsive to this benefits to self message. People were 31% more likely to, to donate. Um, average contributions increased by 56%. And had we rolled that postcard campaign out statewide, we would have raised an additional $1.5 million um, out of, and again, total donations were only three. So the effect was very large. Um, and we only paid $40,000, I think, for the whole campaign. So th that return on investment was huge. The, uh, the Alaska postcard had no effect. There was no difference between the Alaska postcard and the control group. So that one was a waste of money. At least in, well, it wasn't a complete waste of money because we learned something. But in terms of fundraising, it, it, did, it did nothing. Um, <clears throat> now, the upshot of that, to segue into the, um, the 2015, the upshot is the state loved it. They were ecstatic about the fact that we were able to use a simple postcard campaign 
effectively move the needle a little bit, and also be able to identify some of the factors that might be able to feed into another marketing campaign for next year. So the state actually took our warm your heart um, theme, and in 20, for the 2015 campaign, there were f these, these types of postcards and billboards and newspaper ads all over the place that, that drew from that postcard campaign which I was really excited about when I saw it until I realized that this may have unintentionally had a spillover effect on our 2015 ad campaign. Um, all right, so 2015. So this is what I want to talk to you about today. So the, 20, the, the idea here was to drill down a little further on this benefits to self. And there's two ways that you can have benefits to self. One is kind of the intrinsic motivation, which is the warm your heart. Do something because you feel good. The other is that actually the state, the, the, the pick click program created what they called the double your dividend campaign. And so the idea here was if you donate, your name gets put on the list for a lottery. And if your name gets pulled out, if you're one of the 10 lucky winners, you get a double dividend. So instead of getting $2,000, you would get $4,000. I think that's like a rebate. Um, <clears throat> so, um, so, we wanted, so now you've got two different reasons for benefits to self. One is the intrinsic motivation, sort of the heart idea, and then the other is, well, if I donate to, to, to charity, I might actually be able to double my dividend and make, you know, think about buying a lottery ticket. So two, benefit, two ways of benefits to self. Um, in this double your dividend campaign, um, eligibility, anyone who donated was automatically eligible. Um, um, and you only get one entry, so this is insensitive to the size of your donation. Minimum donation is twenty-five dollars. That's always been the case with the permanent fund program or with the pick click give program. So your odds of winning are independent of your donation amount. Just how many people actually give is the only thing that would affect it. Um, and you can think of this as a, a multi-prize charitable lottery. So the design was a two by two design plus a fifth group, which was the control group with with no postcard. Um, we we varied. You know, across the top, we, we stuck with the warm your heart message, and then we added in this double your dividend campaign. Um, and then we also changed the framing over here, gains versus loss. We wanted to see whether or not changing the language from a here's an opportunity to don't miss out on an opportunity, whether or not that type of a message might have some effect on donations as well. One thing to emphasize here, um, in my in my dream world, we would have been able to randomly give people invitations to participate in the lottery. That would have been sort of the holy grail. Um, that was not an option for us. So um, everyone in the state was eligible for it. Um, what we did, what we what we were doing here with this double year dividend campaign was adding to the addition. We were adding information to. It. We, were, we were making sure that individual households got a directed message, making sure that they were aware that this program existed, which is different than um, whether you were able to participate or not. So just show you the postcards, and then I'll show you some of the data. Um, so here's, the, here's a chance to warm your heart, and then don't miss the opportunity to warm your heart. Don't miss the chance to warm your heart. Um, we had a here's the chance to double your dividend, and don't miss the chance to double your dividend. Um, and so these postcards came, were developed in conjunction with the Pick, Click, Give program. There were some, some elements of these postcard designs that they strongly felt had to be in there. So this, this was, you know, we did what we could working with them, but um, ultimately it was their their fundraising campaign and they had the final say as to what exactly uh, the postcards would look like in the color schemes. Um, this notion of Love Alaska, that was non-negotiable. That's, that's sort of their branded logo type of thing and all the postcards had that, um, had that on there and we just made sure it was sort of as equally prominent on all the cards. Okay, so the data. So we have data of applications, whether, whether they actually made a pledge. So we have the missing data that we have information on people who filed but didn't donate. Um, we have every charity that they actually gave to, how much they gave to them, and then the demographics we have are pretty basic, age, gender. Um, we have their home zip and their mailing zip, which you would think are the same, but there are people who have differences. This would be um, Olympic athletes, uh, students who are living out of state are still eligible, um, military, and a, and a few other exceptions like that. Um, throughout, we control for that, and if we, if we include the home zips only, if, if we include the mailing zips only, if we only use the people where they have the same, the conclusions are all the same across the board, so the results aren't sensitive to that, um, to that issue. Um, and then we have all the historical data from, to, from the beginning of the Pick, Click, Give program. So we have all the permanent fund registrations starting in 2009 and their donations. All right, so again, only, per, only online applicants, so if we think that mail applicants are different, sure, that, that could play a role, but the only way to, to pick, click, give is through the online application process. Um, I mentioned the different home and mailing zips. And then finally, this is intent to treat. Um, we don't have the data on 
on whether or not somebody actually received the postcard or not. We know that we mailed the postcards to all the households in particular zip codes, but whether they saw it, whether they received it, whether it's delivered, whether they processed it, th that part we don't know. Um, because of time, I'll just skip over the summary statistics. Um, so in 2015, if you look at the amount donated, this is just, there's a couple of different regressions that we've run, but this is the, the basic results. Um, v controls for the, um, for the two different postcards, the, the, there's absolutely no evidence to suggest that the loss or the gain framing had any effect whatsoever. So I'm lumping those two together. So, so, none, so none of the analysis uh, go, goes down that road. Um, warm list is whether or not they donated the previous year and then some controls for the things that we know. This stuff over here has been fairly consistent throughout all the analysis, both in 14 and in 15, so there's no surprises there. No surprise that warm list donors are more likely to give, but this, these two postcards basically had no effect. Um, this is on individual donations, has no effect on um, probability of giving or conditional gifts. And I think, honestly, I think what's happening here is that this year's postcard campaign compared to last year just got, um, the messages just got swamped by them picking up with our Warm Your Heart campaign and embedding in everything that, everything that they did, including the color schemes and the logos and all sorts of stuff. And so this one more postcard just became um, a small signal in a much noisier environment. So we were a little disappointed at that, in that part, so we thought, well, let's go back and take a look at the 2014 data to find out whether or not this really strong effect that we had in 2014 on the benefits to self, whether or not that actually um, had a spillover effect into 2015. So are, are we bringing people into the fold and then having them continue to donate, or are, are we lose, is this kind of a one-time thing because they got the postcard? So we thought we'd take a look at that. And sure enough, there is pretty strong evidence to suggest that the people that we brought into the fold in, in some sense using the uh, benefits of the self postcard that that is a at least if you think of two years as long run but at least um, it, it's still continuing to have an effect so this this regression here is the individual donations in 2015 against the treatments they were in in 2014 okay and this benefits to self does continue to have a, um, a positive effect on individual donations um, probability of giving a little, a little bit mixed over here. Once we control for these other things, that effect seems to go away. But conditional gifts are, um, are significantly higher across the board. So there does seem to be some evidence that when you start to prime people on benefits to self and sort of a warm glow of giving, that that, um, that effect is, uh, is persisting over time, at least over two years. Um, so in summary, um, 2014, we had very strong positive effects in terms of increasing donations, increasing the probability of giving when we focus on the benefits to the self. Um, in 2015, um, we're basically not getting any effects. That postcard campaign in the grand scheme of things really did not have much of an effect, but we were still able to take advantage of the fact that we now have 2015 data on our 2014 givers. And when we take a look at that, those people who were affected by the postcards in 2014 still continued to, um, to, uh, to support the different programs in 2015 as well. Um, down the road, we need to do a little bit more um, analysis on the different interactions of the, the the, think of th the three by three matrix of the, the treatments in 2014 versus the 2015 to see whether or not there's any, any more subtle effects that we might be able to identify. But that's where we'll be going next with it. So with that, I think I'm pretty much about out of time. So I'll thank you and I guess, do we have time for a question or two? Yeah. So it's time for some questions. No, there's... I was, I was going to say two, it was like 200, it was about, I was going to say about 300. Okay. So here, so if, if, you, if you want to add all these up, that's, these, these numbers in parentheses are the zips. And, and these numbers here are the number of people within each of those zips. So, so when, when we randomized over the zips in 2014, we, we, you know, we, we, we did a randomization. In 2015, we randomized again not necessarily blocking on 2014 treatment, so that's why it's not balanced. We just we, blo we blocked on the zips to randomize on randomize on zips, and I think we w was on population size, if I'm not mistaken, is w with the primary no previous previous, 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 previous okay. In, 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 in both years, there was there was th th there was always a no po a no postcard control. That, in fact, that's what this baseline baseline would be. Yeah. 
no no postcard at all. Yeah. Any other questions? Oh, in the back. Good. I did not show that yet, no. Um, the, and that, that's the, on the plane ride over here, I got as far as I could. Um, and and that's, on, that's on the to-do list. I, I did some really, really quick checks to see whether or not anything would jump out. And I, I'm not optimistic that we're going to find anything on, on the crosses that doesn't just boil down to, um, to, this, to this result up here. Um, but, I, but I can't say that for sure until I play with it a little bit more. All right, great. Thank you, everybody.